CBS Fox Video presents a collector's preview. CBS Fox Video would love to tell you about four of the most distinguished dramatic series to ever come out of Great Britain. But we can't. Instead, we're here to tell you about a bunch of shows with enough sex, violence, more violence, dancing vegetables, and silly walks to make you grow at least six pairs of hands. Presenting Forty Towers, Ripping Yarns, Black Adder the Third, and The Young Ones. My God, you're ugly, aren't you? <laughs> Basil Forty has a little difficulty when it comes to human contact. We don't think you're well, Mr. Forty. Well, perhaps not, but I'll live longer than you. No, no, no! Oh. <laughs> Will you stop talking about the war? Me? You started it? We did not start it. Yes, you did. You invaded Poland. <laughs> John Cleese stars in the funniest British situation comedy of all time. Natural mom. <laughs> Faulty Towers. Michael Palin stars in a series of spine-tingling, knuckle-gnawing adventures. Aye. Ripping Yarns, a collection of tales stuffed with drama. Now, do you remember what your Uncle Arthur said just before he died? Suspense. I'm going to have to kill you. What? Completely? And adventure. If I'm still alive when you get back, I'll show you my cyst. Gosh, thanks, Uncle Jack. That's ripping yarns, more ripping yarns, and even more ripping yarns. Go away! I'm sorry. He was a man of compassion. You know, Baldrick, the world isn't fair. If it was, things like this wouldn't happen, would they? <laughs> a man with a great understanding of the world. Disease and deprivation stalk our land like two giant stalking things. And a man who had a way with women. If we were the last three humans on Earth, I'd be trying to start a family with Baldrick. <laughs> Black Adder the Third, starring Rowan Atkinson, along with... A lot of stupid actors strutting around, shouting with their chests thrust out so far, you'd think their nipples were attached to a pair of charging elephants. <laughs> Meet the young ones. Neil. Great. Rick. Pathetic. Mike. Uncanny. And Vivian. Stupid! Four typical college students who spend most of their time watching the telly and lighting each other's beds on fire. We never used to be like this. Yes, we did. <laughs> That's just a sort of crazy imaginative thing that happens around here, isn't it? The Young Ones. So, if you're looking for a head-splitting British comedy at a collectible price, you either need serious help or you should check out the British Comedy Invasion from CBS Fox Video. Check for title availability wherever videos are sold. And now for our feature presentation. Likes a change from the old one, that's all. Yeah, it hasn't been raised to the ground yet. Well, I think it looks like a gigantic lavatory. Oh, pretty fair, really. Look, it's got a letterbox. That's going to be really useful, man. What for? Uh, looking out of when people knock. Well, it's nice to have a front door. We had a front door in the last house. Yes, Vivian, but it was nailed to the ceiling in the living room. <laughs> it had to be done. Yeah, I had to. I was drunk. But just give me the key.
Now watch this very closely. Right. You see? Oh, I used to be a cat burglar, you know. Oh, could you be? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got a Swiss bank account with 2,000 bloody cats in it. Come on. Oh, good boy. More bloody students. Oh, shut up and put some clothes on. Oh, well, look at all these letters. I thought Mr. Belofsky said the last lot only moved out yesterday. Yeah, they did. They were illiterate. But they were philosophy students. So? Oh. Anyway, they're probably Bill's. Who's Bill? This is my bedroom! Oh, yeah? Yes! I was here first! You got any witnesses? Look, I don't need witnesses. Just get off my property! No! Get out! <laughs> Look, this must be my bedroom. All my clothes are here. <laughs> Vivian! <laughs> oh, I didn't have the bedroom. I don't want it. It's not mine. Yes, it is. Ah, no, it isn't. You said it was yours just now. So did you. No, I didn't. Did it. 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 Neil, your bedroom's on fire. This was my bedroom. Oh no. <laughs> this is my bedroom. This is mine. Caption. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. You know, son, I just love your English Beatles. Mind you, after 20 years of the suckers, I ain't got much choice. I thought you were dead. A lot of folks did, but it ain't harm a career, in it? No, 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 no. Uh, you got any new material? Well, it just so happens I've been writing a song up here. It's all kind of concerning my diet. It's called Cuckoo Daddy Longlegs. You want to hear it? Oh, yeah. Right now? Well, there's no point hanging around. Saturday night, hanging round for a fight. Fight a real cutie with a dust mite blue. Like there's records and tapes. <laughs> Videos. Overseas sales. Cable TV. 60% McCartney, 40% me. There's got to be 25 million in this. Rain fly pie with a mosquito side salad. 23 years on a meat free diet. Beatles, crickets, gonna get you sick. Here's a little sucker and you ought to try it. Cookies, daddy long legs. Your bed makes more money than Peggy said. <laughs> Well, I'll probably get a few quid on the guitar. <laughs> Lucky the guys told me my bedroom was on fire. I might have gone to sleep and burned to death. <laughs> Not that I ever sleep much anyway, because I have to spend most of my time in the kitchen having a really bad time. Hello, kitchen. 
Hello, hello. My name's Neil. But don't bother remembering it, because I'll probably soon be dead anyway. Great. The only thing left in the cabin is the teapot. And that's filthy. Thanks a lot, Mr. Bolovsky. Thanks for giving us the oldest, dirtiest teapot in the world. Oh, wow. Just look at all this mess. You know, I, I wish just once, just once, this wouldn't happen to me, you know? Oh, yeah. It's very zen. Hi, Neil. Is this some sort of sick joke? Why isn't supper ready? You haven't done a bloody thing, have you, Neil? Oh, well, I'm sorry, Vivian, but considering that none of you helped me unpack or do anything at all, and considering I'm not even feeling very well today, actually, no, it's not ready. I haven't got six pairs of hands, you know. I wish I had, but I haven't. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I've got six pairs of hands, babe. Look, look, it's amazing. Neil, where's that emergency tin of spaghetti hoops we brought? Rick, Rick, look at you, man. You're gonna freak, you're gonna freak, man. You haven't even made the tea, Neil. Neil? Brilliant, brilliant. I suppose I have to make my own bloody tea. Rick, come and look, Rick. Come and look at this. You're going to freak. I've got six pairs of hands. I'm Krishna. Dear, oh dear. You'd do anything to try and impress me, wouldn't you, Neil? Where's Vivian? Vivian! Ah, there you are, Vivian. Do you think I could have a word with you? No. It's just a, just a little piece of information, really. Uh, why did you throw the toilet out of the window? <laughs> to lower the rent. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Stupid of me. Uh, just one other thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, now we can go to the rent tribunal. You don't have to pay as much for a house with an outside lavvy. Really? <laughs> really? Well, I don't believe you. I think you did it on purpose because you know I've got a runny bottom. <laughs> going to make the supper or not? Well, I think you'd better ask him that, hadn't you? I'm a bit more interested in my bottom at the moment. <laughs> Neil! Neil! Let's not beat about the bush. Are you going to make supper or am I going to kick your teeth in? <laughs> Where are you going with that sack, Mike? Nowhere. Is that a bag of dirty washing? No. I thought we were supposed to take everyone's washing when we go to the laundrette. What about the people's charter we drew up? <laughs> right. Laundry. Right. None of the guys, right, no matter what, like not even if they've been eaten by wild dogs... Hey! Hey, that's my claws! ...shall go to the laundrette without first collecting all the other guys' dirty gear. Yeah, claws 83. Oh. Except for Mike. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Anyway, I'm not going to the laundrette. I'm going to the cellar. I've got a stiff. Know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, well, that's uh, fair enough then, I suppose. <laughs> he gets worse by the minute. Well, at least he's not doing the washing. Right, right Neil. I'm going to give you three seconds to make supper. Starting now! <laughs> three seconds. <laughs> One! <laughs> Two! What do you fancy, Viv? Three! Where's my supper? Uh, well, it's not quite finished yet, actually. You know, it's not ready. <laughs> Neil, yes! Lounge around, have a good time while we starve to death, beat Nick! And you've broken my favourite plate! Oh well. Suppose we should just have to cook our own supper. <laughs> what was that? What? Nothing. And my mind's beginning to play tricks with me. I thought we were lying on a raft just now. 
You should take it easy, you know. You must be working too hard. <laughs> Bloody hot, isn't it? It is. I should get a lower wattage bulb. <laughs> Help! We're sinking! We're sinking! Oh, relax. We're not sinking. We're not sinking. I'll get some fresh air in here. Uh, what's the matter? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, can you swim at all? <laughs> what? Uh, well, I was just wondering. Wondering? Yes, I was wondering if you might swim to the chemist and get me something for my hallucinations. Have you had one too? Uh, either that, or the whole town is flooded. <laughs> You're right. You know, we've been working too hard. I haven't had a holiday for over a year now. Well, what about this? <laughs> you! What? This? A holiday? Two weeks in a cellar under a light bulb? <laughs> well, it was all I could get. All you could get. Get, do me a favour. What? Check and see if that really was an hallucination outside. How did you get here? You'd have to ask my parents. They wouldn't tell me. <laughs> Would you mind looking after my buddy? <laughs> All right, so it was a bad joke. But then death isn't funny. This is revolting. You know, it is amazing what you can come up with with just flour and water. <laughs> yeah, glue. <laughs> what is that little white dot? It's a little white dot. Oh, very clever. Must be really old telly. What, hippie? Look, it's a sign, that little white dot. It means something really heavy. It means there's no more telly. <laughs> it's time to go to bed. I'm going upstairs now to finish painting my astrological star chart, all right? Do you really think anyone has ever been in the slightest bit interested in anything you ever say or do ever, Neil? <laughs> Fascist. <laughs> <sighs> You going to bed, Vivian? No. I'm going to watch the dot for a bit longer. <laughs> Wish we had a video, then I could watch it in the morning. <laughs> oh, well. Nighty-night. And don't forget to unplug your set. Why? Because it'll blow up, you silly boy. <laughs> Don't! It's never going to blow up. I think I'll play murder in the dark. I could have made a fortune if I turned pro. But for me, it's the sport that matters. Hey, Neil, can you throw my ball back, OK? Oh, OK. was typing out an essay. He used it as tipex. Bastard! What are you doing standing outside my bedroom then, Mike? Well, there's only the floor to sit on, Rick. Oh, 
Ha ha, very funny. I suppose you think it's very clever to laugh with three million people on the dole. Yeah. Look, can you just get out of the way, please? I want to get into my bedroom. Uh, uh, you're not exactly dressed for it. What? Well, all right, all right. I won't stand on convention. He never stood on me. That'll be a fiver for the room, not the gag. Five pounds to get into my own bedroom? Ha! What have you done? Turn it into a roller disco? Uncanny. <laughs> look, look, uh, do you mind all just going, please? I mean, I'm sorry to be a party pooper. It's just that I, I'd like to get undressed now. Please. Look, man. Either stretch your stuff or bug off. All right, all right. This is it. Everybody listen to me. <laughs> Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> Sorry, Governor. Apples and pears, tit for tat, I love London town, and I was at Violet's funeral. But this little Herbert, this little Herbert has been bothering the gentlemen and the young ladies whilst they were shaking their booties down in the ground. Know what I mean? Gentle as you can, slobber. I don't want the punters getting upset. Mike, you bastard! Next <laughs> time, throw the paper out as well, Vivian. Neil, help! Uh, no, I can't, Rika because now is the time for me to finish painting my astrological chart. That'll do, Slubber. That'll do. <sighs> I'm sorry, Rick. I mean, if I was to make an exception, who would respect me then, would you? Yes, well, I'm going to call the pigs, actually. Let's see what the pigs have to say. Oh, wise up, Rick. Look, this world is like a burnt steak. Small, tough, and the chips are always stacked against it. <laughs> Ah, you're always so pleased with yourself, aren't you, Mike? You always think you're so bloody clever. Yeah. I've arranged for you to share Neil's bedroom. What? I'm not sharing a bedroom with that bubba, Johnny. <laughs> All right, Neil, shut up. Before you say anything, I've just tossed a coin for who gets the bed, and you lost. It's completely fair, and if you don't believe me, ask Mike, so shut up. Oh, uh, OK, Rick. <laughs> what? What? What did you just say? What? You just called me a bastard, didn't you? <laughs> But you better not, Neil, because let me tell you, me and Mike and Vivian are getting pretty sick of you. It's here. Why are your sheets all sticky? Oh, it's probably just the red paint. But, ah! <laughs> OK, Neil. It may seem heavy-handed for £1.50, but when I lend somebody money, I expect to get it back. Do you know what I mean? I'm stuck on I'm going to be rich! I found oil in the cellar! Vivian, for heaven's sake! Easy, 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 easy. Spill the beans, Viv, and I don't mean on a toast. Well, it's very simple. I was playing murder in the dark in the cellar, and I was getting really bored. So I thought, oh no, I'll crack the floor with my head. And when I did, this huge smell of oil came out. Now listen, this could be very big, and I mean family size. Tonight, we sleep on it. What? All four on one spurt? Listen, we're going to be rich. House meeting tomorrow morning, nine o'clock in the broom cupboard. Oh, and Neil, I want that one pound fifty by Wednesday, otherwise another moose dies. <laughs> Oh dear me, Mum. I know our job is to serve the young gentleman and look after them as best we can, but I'm sure young Master Neil do treat us very rough sometime. And so he should, young Lucy, for we love it. The complete negation of our personality, the mind-numbing servility, and the 18-hour day, and we expect no reward but a staircase over our heads. Oh dear, yes, Lucy. We love it. For personal abuse is our lot. And the further back you go, the better it was. Now, now, everyone. The masters are coming below stairs to beat us. Not a peek out of you. Best behaviour or you'll have me to answer to. <laughs> it does seem very strange that Mike should call a house meeting in here. I mean, I've never been in here before. That's because this is where we keep the cleaning stuff, Rick. <laughs> no, it's not, Neil. It's because we only moved in here yesterday. Actually, I'm surprised that anyone except me knows this place even exists. Cause all uh, important as um, hippie. a hippie, <laughs> it does happen to be me that does all the cleaning round here. Moan, 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 balling, just because you do a little bit of housework. <laughs> what a little.
little bit. All right. All right, house meeting, OK? This is house. a house meeting, Neil. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is it? <laughs> Welcome, Vivian, then. Then, Deet. We're only here one time because you kept me awake all night, pacing up and down and ringing bells. Listen, man, sleep gives you cancer. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Listen, Neil, do you know the difference between you and some number twos? <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> oh, stop crying. I'm not crying, Rick. I've got some dust in my sinuses. Well, that'll teach you to stop skiving on the cleaning, then, won't it? Oh, no. What? Uh, I'm going to sneeze, Rick. Neil, uh, no. I am, I am. I always no. do. I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Neil. It always happens. <laughs> Here they are, old President Day! Southern inspired insurgents! I'll teach you to try and assassinate the President! Old President Day! What the bloody heck is going on? Shut your face, traitor! Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Missed both my legs! Shut up! Sticking chewing gum on the floor. <laughs> Silence! Silence! Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. I'm glad you could all make it, because if you hadn't done, you wouldn't be here. Wouldn't be here. <laughs> now, what were you doing in the broom cupboard? Good question! Uh, oh, yeah. Um, we were having a house meeting, actually, yeah. Impossible. Impossible! <laughs> uh, because Colonel Vivian and myself held a house meeting a quarter of an hour ago upstairs. And I'm afraid to say that under the new regulations, non-attendance at house meetings is punishable by death. Ha ha ha, death. <laughs> I would like to overlook this, but unfortunately, you do seem to be responsible for certain other criminal activity. Ha ha! Namely, loitering with intent. Good one. Conspiring in the broom cupboard. Brilliant. And damaging police equipment. <laughs> However, I, El Presidente... Viva El Presidente! <laughs> I'm prepared to offer a free amnesty if you behave like good citizens and go down to the oil fields in the cellar and dig up all the oil. You fascist hunter! <laughs> Look, you do want to be incredibly rich, don't you? Um, well, yes, but why can't you go down to the oil cellars and dig as well? Oh, that is fab, Rick, that is fab. Fab! So when I pop along to see the Saudis, what do I say, eh? Hello, King Fowled, I've got some oil for you. In fact, I've got a sample of it here all over my shirt. You wouldn't have to have a tin of swore figure about the palace, your royal mightiness. Wise up, Rick, he chopped my hands off. Shh! Don't say that about the Arabs, Mike. You'll get us all into terrible trouble. Your Magnificence, the British Foreign Secretary have arrived to offer his apology for recent press criticism of our alleged mandatory cruelty. I will see him now. Which bit of him would you like to see first? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, Biff. <laughs> That's okay now. It was bad happen. Sooner or later. <laughs> You're all right, Vivian. <laughs> Vivian? <laughs> Great! This is it! I've been waiting two hours for this! It's a revolution! <laughs> what do you mean, revolution? Revolution! Blood runs! Flags wave! Come on, everybody! Throw down your tools and throw up a barricade! Come on! Run into the Winter Palace! Run into the Winter Palace and stand on the tables, waving bits of paper at each other! Yes! Yes! yes. Hello, are you the Tsar? Yes, I am, actually! Blam! Blam! Ah, tough luck, like fascist! That's what happens to people who aren't working class! Yes, yes, Neil, Neil. Listen, I've got everything ready. Yeah. In ten minutes' time, there's going to be a massive rock and roll benefit in, in the drawing room, right? Great. And right at the climax, the oppressed working classes of this house, right, that's you, mainly, Ooh, great. right, yeah. will rise up and seize control of the state. Huh? Brilliant! Revolution! Revolution! Watch out, Norman Tennant! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I wish they wouldn't keep doing that. It's passage of time, Rick. <laughs> Who are you? I'm coming in here to watch Postman Pat. <laughs> uh, this is the band Radical Posture, and uh, my name's Alexi, Yuri Gagarin, Siege of Stalingrad, Glorious Five Year Plan, Sputnik Tractor, Moscow Dynamo, Back Four, Bolovsky. <laughs> My dad was a bit of a communist, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> Do you know you're the spitting image of our landlord, Jersey? Yeah, he's, uh, he's my uncle, actually, you know. That's incredible, that. You're as like as two peas. I hate that expression. It's so patronising. Yes. It's just the sort of vegetablist comment you'd expect from a repressive dictator. Well, this is it. The massive rock and roll benefit for the oppressed workers of the hat. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hi, Mike. Um, what are you doing here? Never mind what I'm doing here. Who are they? Oh, blimey. Um, <laughs> search me, but perhaps they're friends of somebody's just popped in to... I don't know, play a rehearsal or something. <laughs> uh, would you like to go upstairs and lie down in your room? I think I'd better. <laughs> Great! Hi, Sputnik. <laughs> or can I call you Comrade? <laughs> now, you know the plan, don't you? Right at the peak of the gig, OK, you incite the masses to rise and we burn the Reichstag. Well, we burn Mike's room anyway. <laughs> and then, hey, presto, revolution! Stuff the revolution. Where's my 200 quid? Uh, yeah, well, I'd better go sell some tickets, hadn't I? <laughs> <laughs> tickets! Anybody? Probably stuck in a queue or something. <laughs> uh, Neil, did you actually to get to get in uh, no i'm the oppressed workers of the house remember well yes i know but this is a benefit gig you know uh, the tickets are 200 pounds each 200 pounds that's yeah. nearly a terms grant man look neil this benefit is for you it's in aid of you to help you and you won't even pay for it god how self-centered can you get come on 200 pounds i've only got 50p <laughs> well that'll have to do well he better be good this norman tebbit <laughs> It's really great to be here at this benefit, actually. Woo! Yeah! I'm, I'm feeling really kind of, woo! Okay, yeah! Hey, you're feeling okay? Woo! Yeah, all right, yeah! Woo! All right, yeah! This is really funky. It's like one big kind of empty room here, yeah! Woo! All right, okay! We're actually going to do a number now. There was a song in the charts recently about racial harmony, um, about black and white people living together side by side in perfect racial harmony, together on pianos. <laughs> um, I, I might be a bit stupid like, you know what I mean? But um, I know the pianos aren't going to solve nothing, you know what I mean? No. There's only one thing that unites us, one thing that we all have in common. What is it? What is that one thing that unites us? It's not class or ideology, colour, creed or roots. The only thing that unites us is Dr. Martin's boots. And Dr. Martin gave his boots to the world so that everybody could be free. They're classless, maxless, he was just one boot from retail for only £19.99p. Pretty soon everybody be wearing those boots with the airflow cells. And your boots will have a meeting and your boots will take control. Thanks to Dr. Martin, everybody moved to one beat. Thanks to Dr. Martin, they'll be dancing in the street. No, don't you want me? OK, Boots, do your stuff! Dr. Martin's boots. Dr. Martin's, Dr. Martin's, Dr. Martin's boots. Dr. Martin's, Dr. Martin's, Dr. Martin's boots. Boring! Don't you ask me to ever read the NME? What happened to the revolution? God, you think Devil Woman had never been written? <laughs> what are you two doing here? 
You should be down in the cellar digging for oil. I hope you realise that all this loafing around has cost us one day of being incredibly rich. What? Goodness, is that the time? broken. <laughs> she loves me. She loves me lots. <laughs> she loves me. She loves me lots. Well, loves me. I've finished the new car competition. I'm going to win a Ford Tipex any minute. It's quite easy, really. All you've got to do is match up six pictures of famous noses with six pictures of famous bogeys. <laughs> Thought that'd shock you. Well, it's not true because then, then you've got to say in ten words what cornflakes mean to you. So I put cornflakes, 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 cornflakes. Pathetic. <laughs> you never win, Vivian. Why not? There's only nine words. <laughs> Corn flakes. <sighs> anyway, you'll still never win because nothing interesting ever happens to us. Stop being so boring, Rick. Oh, well, that's nice, isn't it? That's very nice. Coming from someone as boring as you. Look, can you two guys stop hustling each other? I'm getting really bored with it, all right? <laughs> oh, dear me! Poor old Neil's getting bored. The most boring person in the whole world's finally getting a taste of his own medicine. Listen, I think we're overdoing the boredom motif in this conversation. It's time for us to extend our vocabulary. All right, all I said, yeah. Mike, was We heard what you said and it was really very boring. boring. Viv, I thought we yes, decided... Yes, you just... decided, Michael! <laughs> guys! <laughs> guys! Look at us, squabbling, <laughs> bickering, like children. What's happening to us? We never used to be like this. <clears throat> yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, he's right, Rick. We've always been like this. Well, yes, I, I know, but... But that's just exactly my point. Nothing ever changes. Nothing ever happens to us. Monopoly? <laughs> Yes. Ha ha, Mike! Landed on the old kid boat. That's mine. Rent. Come on, pay up now. Uh, all Instantly. right, all right. I think the Mike Exchequer can handle a debt of four pounds. <laughs> hey, wouldn't it be amazing if all this money was real? <laughs> <laughs> that is the single most predictable and boring thing that anybody could ever say whilst playing Monopoly. <laughs> and what about Vivian? I could say Vivian, couldn't I? That'd be pretty boring. You have one second prize in a beauty contest. <laughs> Smash Rick over the head with the bank. <laughs> I did not say that, Michael. Vivian is cheating, Mike. No, he's right, Rick. That's exactly what it says. In Biro, Mike. In Biro, over the top of the pin. <laughs> but we have to change the rules because Monopoly's so boring. Congratulations. It is your birthday. You may set fire to Rick's bed. Good one. <laughs> Get out of jail free. You may keep this card, sell it, or stick it up Rick's bottom. <laughs> Vivian, you ruined the game! I was bored! Yeah, well, that's nothing. Neil got so bored, he's gone down to the garden to kill himself. And it's his go. <laughs> You're a spade. 
I always call him that. <laughs> From Monopoly to the grave, the most interesting thing that ever happens to me is sneezing. I wish I was Magnus Magnuson. Hey, Neil. Sitting round a Monopoly board may be a great way of spending Christmas, but I don't want to wait that long. No, no, Mike, it's all right. Uh, I'm just digging a grave. Uh, I don't think I'm going to kill myself today, actually, but uh, it's just in case, you know. <laughs> you know, living in a world where nothing boring ever happens can be a real piss-up. <laughs> Ah, the man in the time machine has just returned with the actual video of the birth of Christ. Would you care to... Not now, minion. Also next door, the Rolling Stones are making a new album, while two hippopotamus make love underneath the piano. The king is bored shitless with interesting <laughs> things, minion. And so am I. What I want is to meet someone who is totally and utterly mind-numbingly boring. But I suppose I never will. I suppose it's because I'm so mind-numbingly boring that I never get to meet any interesting people. So you decided to come in now, have you, Neil? Well, we've finished playing Monopoly now, and you've lost. Oh, I'm amazed I lasted as long as I did. Eh? <laughs> There's someone at the door, Rick. Someone at the door, Vivian. Someone at the door, Neil. There's someone at the door, Mike. I know. There's someone at the door, Rick. There's someone at the door, Vivian. <laughs> There's someone at the door, Mike. There's someone at the door, Neil. <laughs> Well, don't look at me. I'm in Paris. <laughs> you haven't left the house all day. Vivian, you ever heard of cloning? No. Oh, that's good. Would you swear to that? Certainly, if that's what you want. Big jobs. <laughs> Ow! Hey, hey, guys. Great idea. Listen. Listen, why don't we, right, decide who's going to answer the door, right? And then, and then that person could, like, go and answer it, right? And then, and then find out who it is and who they want to see, right? And then, like, come back in here and tell whoever it is <laughs> that there's somebody who wants to see them, yeah? Neil, do what? me a favour. What? Die. So I suppose I'll just have to go and answer it myself, as usual. Somebody call a taxi. <laughs> Billy Bolovsky. Yeah, so who needs pleasure? Hello, Billy. How are the trees? Who called a taxi? What do you want, Billy? Uh, you got a message from Mr. Bolovsky? I'm Mr. Bolovsky. Oh, no, no, your brother, Jertsy. You got a message from him? Got a piece of paper. Who whoever called a the taxi, uh, they can have the message. <laughs> all right, all right. I called a taxi. Okie dokie, Skip. Where do you want to go? I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> well, what the bloody hell do you call a taxi for then? <laughs> I had to come all the way from Brazil for this, you know. <laughs> they stop it out of me wages. You know how much a taxi driver is? I can't even afford to buy new shoelaces. Well, it's a good job you're not a taxi driver then, isn't it? It's a good job I'm wearing Wellingtons. Look, just give us a note. <laughs> I'm thirsty. It's in the cupboard. Oh, no, not the goldfish. <laughs> don't worry, goldfish everywhere. I am, in fact, a stunt goldfish. In fact, by the time this programme comes out, I shall be doing the new James Bond film. So, there's no need to write in. Sure, they never read the letters anyway. Oh, hello, 
Oh, pussycat. Here's your Uncle Billy. Here, what you doing in a bucket? Oh. Come on, everybody, let's play Daleks. Exterminate! 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, what am I now? What am I now? Come on, come on, come on. Quick, 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 quick. Come on, what am I now? A pain in the arse. <laughs> no, I'm a hairbrush, dogs. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try another one. Here we go. What am I now? What am I now? Come on. Clinically insane. No, little house on the prairie. <laughs> Billy. Sir Billy. Ah, oh, Sir Billy. Look. Why don't you just go away? Cos I've got a message for you. Then get it to us! Oh, doesn't he get excited? Ah! Right, here we are. This is the message. I shall read it to you. Are we ready, clocks? Right, here we... Hang on. There's no words on this. Oh, I think they must have fallen off somewhere, so... It... Oh, no, it's all right. They're on the other side. That's OK, right. They're... <laughs> Finders keepers, losers weepers. Rick. <laughs> I've not always been mad, you know, but, um... I was actually driven mad by the indifference of architects and council planners. You see, I live in a tower block, and, um... The thing about those is there's a terrible noise problem, because there's no noise or insulation at all. You know, and eight floors below you, there's always some bastard who's got a Yamaha home organ, you know? <laughs> You're just about to go to sleep, and you hear this... <laughs> and, like... The people who live upstairs from me, I, I can't understand what they're doing, you know, I listen. And all I can hear is this weird noise and it goes, vroom, vroom, blam, blam, vroom, vroom, blam, blam. It sounds right, it sounds like two elephants on a motorbike riding round and round, while a seal bangs a kipper on the table. <laughs> I went upstairs to complain, and the door was answered by this elephant in a crash helmet. <laughs> Standing behind him is this seal going, what is it now, now? <laughs> I don't know, it's just something cracked inside, you know, and I, I started thinking I was a piece of sponge, you know, and I just started getting very depressed, and I just got all the way down, you know, all the way, and I just got... What does the note say, Mike? Dear boys, don't let Billy near the goldfish bowl. Your friend and landlord, Jersey Bolovsky. There's no one there. <laughs> God, I'm boring. I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you my own! Would Mr. Saunders like some cake? Oh, yes, please. There we are, then. Oh! That looks nice, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Anything wrong? Well, I can't reach it. <laughs> it can't reach it. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, it spilt some. Oh, dear, oh, oh dear, oh, oh dear. Who's a naughty boy, then? <laughs> we'll have to get that cleaned up, won't we? Uh, Here, all go. Yes, Footman. Footum. Footum. Pass me that can of lager, would you? <laughs> Soon have it looking like a new bin. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bed. Oh no! No, please! Oh no! Oh, oh, oh. 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 Let's give it some Barry Manilow. Oh, no. oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> it really gets off on Barry. <laughs> oh, go. Any news of your promotion? Oh, yeah. Uh, I've only got another ten souls to collect, and I'm eligible for a nice cushy job in admin. Why, oh. it's. It's taken me five millennia to get this far, because no one ever summons you up to earth with a name like Orgo. I mean, people don't say Orgo by accident. <laughs> oh, is it not loud enough? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're in with a chance. I mean, someone might say, shall we go to the theatre or go to the cinema? Oh. Or they might say, shall we go shopping or go... <laughs> But no one ever says my name. No one ever says Footum. Why couldn't I be called William? I don't know. Here, look at this. Bloody hell! <laughs> Bloody hell. No room for me on the sofa as usual. I have to sit on the rickety chair. Goody gumdrops, just in time to watch Oh Crikey on ITV. Oh, Rick, we were watching Bastard Squad. Oh, were you? Oh, well, get up out of the sofa and go and turn it over if you want. I don't mind. Oh, um, 
No, I've hurt my back. Oh. It's a shame. Now you can sit on the rickety chair. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> no, I think I'll just sit here on the floor, if that's all right with you lot, then. <laughs> all right, Mike, not in your way or anything, am I? This is my favourite programme. It would just be typical if it was interrupted by a newsflash about a siege or something like that. We interrupt tonight's scheduled programme, <laughs> The Bastard Squad, to bring you up to the minute coverage of a siege which is now underway in North London. We join BBC's reporter, Dan Prick, on the spot. Yes. A man believed to be a lunatic foreign terrorist, one of those greaseball raving reds who seem to crop up everywhere since we stopped running the world, is now taking refuge in an insanitary slum dwelling in North London, the sort of place where you normally get squatters anyway. A police and army siege is now underway. Oh, Christ. Boring. Look, now we get a shot of a street for the next four hours. <laughs> Nothing ever happens in these things. Well, if it does happen, we don't get to see it. Yes, it looks as though something's happening now. The police and the army are moving in. <laughs> right on. Rule Britannia. <laughs> Tiny figure in the middle distance jumps over a gate. <laughs> Rule Britannia. <laughs> They're dubbing that sound on. That's never real. <laughs> Doesn't that look like your car, Bill? Nah. Why is he in a Ford Anglia with flames up the side? Well, that's a yellow Ford angle with flames up the side. Yeah, but it's not mine, is it? Cool. That was a loud one. <laughs> Look, is anybody watching this? Well, that looks like it. We're sorry not to bring you the bastard squad, but at least we got the mad coon with the gun, eh? <laughs> <sighs> hey, guys, why don't we eat? That'd be quite interesting, wouldn't it? Yes, 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 eat, eat. I wonder how many lentils I've ever eaten in my life. Oh, <laughs> no, it must be more than that, Viv. Lentils are really good, you know? No matter how many times you have them, they never get boring. Neil, that's our tea! You've just blown up our tea! Well, well, I didn't do it on purpose, Rick. And we paid for that. Fifteen pence. Come on, pay up now. Fifteen pence. <laughs> but, but I haven't collected this week's money yet. <laughs> that's hardly the point, is it? But it was an accident, Rick. I mean, I just looked at it and it blew up, Rick. <laughs> Well, there's still some on the wall. Maybe we could save some. <laughs> Get some portions together for supper, then. Let's do something. We're bored stupid. Ha-ha! Rick didn't have far to go, did he? I just knew you were going to say that. That's a complete lie, you puff. I knew you were going to say that, too. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't know I was going to do that, did you? <laughs> All right, Vivian, no, I didn't know that, no. <laughs> We're bored stupid, and now we've got nothing to eat. I think the time has come for us to go down to the pub. Darling Carrot, could you ever laugh at Cripple? No, I don't think so. <laughs> i 
Kebab, I've already eaten. Oh shit. Summer Holiday by Cliff Richard. Yeah. You am it. I'll smash your face in. <laughs> I'll go sit over there. It's, right. <laughs> Come on. Right, it's, 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 it's an embarrassment. <laughs> well, just as I expected, totally boring. Yes, the service is terrible too. <laughs> Waiter! <laughs> Waiter! I stole some money from Rick's bedroom this morning, so I'll get these. Ah, <laughs> uh, what would you like, Rick? Coffee, please, Vivian. This is a this is a pub. They don't do coffee. Oh, in that case, I don't particularly want anything, thank you. I don't think it's very clever or smart to drink, actually. I want to stay controlled. Mike. Water, Vivian. In a straight glass. Uh-huh. Uh, Neil? Uh, oh, just a bag of crisps, please, Viv. But, uh, not meat-flavoured, cos I don't abuse my body in the world I live in. I want a pint of water in a straight glass, uh, a bag of roast ox crisps, and uh, mine's a baby sham. <laughs> hello, Vivian. Oh, hello, Mum. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. I didn't know you lived in London. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's Dad? Oh, honestly, Vivian, I do wish you wouldn't ask me that. You know I've absolutely no idea who he is. Well, Vivian, you never told us your mother was a bartender. Well, she was a shoplifter when I knew her. <laughs> she doesn't look strong enough. Hey? <laughs> to lift shop. That'll be £28.50, Vivian. I've only got a fiver. I'll have the ring and the watch. Well, aren't you going to introduce me to your friends? Oh, yeah. Uh, this is a friend of mine called Mike. Uh, this is a friend of mine called Neil. Hello. And that's a complete bastard I know called Rick. <laughs> <laughs> He's just joshing, Mrs Vivian. We're actually terrific friends. <laughs> Ooh, uh, he is a bastard, isn't he? <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Vivian, why did you give him a girl's name? Right. <laughs> now, 
idea. Why don't you come over here and tell me what you've been doing for the last ten years? Okay, ma. Not you. Yeah. Zip face. Him. Hey, babe. Babe. <laughs> I knew I should have stayed at home. Pubs are bourgeois. Right, Mike. All right. Let's go. Of course, you see, I look at life like this. <laughs> Why is that? Problems? Yeah. Had a heavy bust up this morning with my lady. WPC. Don't know. I never could remember her name. Um. It's got a four in it. It's got a four because I remember it. It's a round one like that. Has it got a tail? Yeah. It's a Q. Yeah? Yeah. Pretty sure. Been going out in years. How long? In years. <laughs> I reckon if I played my cards right, I could have. Uh... Mm. <laughs> Either in the groin? No, the other one. Slept with her? Yeah. 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 I reckon I could have slept with her, if it wasn't for something I said. Well, we had a row and uh, I said something about the Pope. <laughs> it's a bit stupid, you know she's Catholic. Yeah, I know she's Catholic. I didn't know the Pope was. <laughs> it's a laugh, though, isn't it? <laughs> that noise you're making in the back of your throat when you hear a joke. Yeah, that's a laugh, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You know what? There are now more tin cans than there are people. Neil, mm. do you want to see my new trick? Mm. Uh, Mike, Mike, do you want to see my new trick? No, I'm busy with the paper. Rick! No, I don't, Vivian. I've got something more important to think about, actually. Yeah. Look! Watch my trick, you bastards, or I'll kill you! Yeah. Brilliant, eh? <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> Wrong finger. <laughs> hey, Vivian. <laughs> Vivian, I think you cut off one of your fingers. Hey, listen to this. Under the new ruling, all a student needs to qualify for an increased grant is a... a numkul pukajul futamuch. From the local authority. What was that, Rick? A numco pukajul fatumsh. Don't you read the Guardian, Neil? What's a fatumsh? <laughs> now I've got three minutes. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem to make any sense. It... Neil, have you just farted? <laughs> No, I don't think so, Rick, no. Well, there's a horrible farty smell in here, and it's definitely not from my bottom. <laughs> well, I'm going to the drawing room. This is worse than cattle's business. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Knackers. Was it you that farted, Mike? <laughs> Who can tell, Neil? I'm a strange guy. I'll deal with that spotty Herbert later. Oh, look, a little girl. <laughs> Meditate on this. Hey! I just 
had a great idea. <laughs> Why don't we go and see a film? Yes, yes, let's go and see a film. Uh, where's the local paper, Mike? It's in the local paper shop, Neil. Where do you think? <laughs> right. Hey, Rick. Yes? I'm just going down the local paper shop, OK? <laughs> That's funny, I don't remember ramming a skewer into my head. I don't believe it. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> well, Mr. Sambo Darky Coon, I've got your number. You're nicked. <laughs> Is there anything the matter, officer? Oh, ho, ho, oh, 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 dear me. Don't we talk lovely, Mr. Rastus Chocolate Drop? Now, listen here, son. I've done a weekend's training with the SAS. I could pull both your arms off and leave no trace of violence. Lord Scarman need never know. What seems to be the trouble, officer? That's white man's electricity or burning, ringing that bell. That's there. I've got your number, so hold out your head. Officer, I represent Kellogg's Cornflakes car competition. I... Oh. Sorry, John. I thought you was a nigger. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Carry on. Hey, guess what, kid? You've won a new Ford Tipex. Come in for touch. Your time is up. I think you got the wrong house. What a piece of luck. <laughs> God. What a boring day. I went to the local paper shop, but they didn't have a local paper. Well, they obviously don't come from this area, Neil. <laughs> hey, guys. Tomorrow, why don't we, as just a suggestion, why don't we try going into college. Now, Neil, now listen. Things may be bad, but there's no need to panic. No, no, no. I'm just going to treat this problem like my mattress and sleep on it. Good night. Who's been gobbing in my lentils? Yes! Who's been gobbing in our lentils? Sonny, let's go to McDonald's. Yes! The grave digger. Aye, it is, Your Holiness. But it's the finest pit we have dug this morrow. <laughs> For is in truth the only one. <laughs> <laughs> then let the punishment commence. Where is the prisoner? Here, sir. Then cast him down, Master Soldier. No, no, in the pit. <laughs> Very good, Master. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this fellow? That's you, Master. <laughs> no, no, in the pit. Very good, Master. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this fellow in the pit? That's me, Master. <laughs> That's right, Matt. 
<laughs> Master prisoner, dost thou know the crime of which thou hast been found guilty of? Yes, your holiness. <laughs> well, what be that crime? Being Scottish and Jewish, two racial stereotypes for the price of one, perhaps the best value in the graveyard this morning. Perhaps not. Incidentally, let me say how pleased I am to be here at the graveyard, where so many other comedians have died before me. Why not? seen the most amazing thing in the garden. <laughs> Neil biffed himself in the face with a flying pan. Rick, you've been looking out of that window for three hours now. Yes, well, it's hardly surprising, is it? Vivian put super glue all over the pane. <laughs> Did I? That was a good joke. I'll probably be disfigured for life, Vivian, and you'll have to pay. Yeah, and then I'll be laughing. <laughs> Not you, matey. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, well, just don't break the glass when you tear your face off, that's all. I won't. I won't because... It's not true! It was a joke I made up, and you fell for it like the fascists you are! God, I'm bored. Might as well be listening to Genesis. Mallow! Malang! Boomerang! Long! Blue oh, boomerang. I'm trying to free form. I'm trying to read. Oh, really? <laughs> I learned how to do that years ago. <laughs> and uh, what is it you're reading, Vivian? Bit of Petrarchian verse, is it? A little bit of French drama? It's called SS Death Camp Criminal Battalion Go to Monte Cassino for the Massacre. <laughs> That's my bloody comic. <laughs> Get it back. No, Vivian, it's mine. Anyway, there's no point reading comics. They're stupid. They treat the kids as if they were, well, as if they were, you know, kids. <laughs> Nothing but war in them. War, war, bloody war. Why can't they have stories about love and peace? Because in sister, you girly. I'm not being girly, Vivian. Longing for a peaceful world is not being girly. It is. It's being soppy and very, very girly. I am not being girly. Look, this entire discussion is completely sexist anyway, and I don't intend to continue it. But, for your information, it is not soppy of me to long for a world where a man will love his brother. Puff. <laughs> You're deliberately trying to provoke me, aren't you? Yeah! For one man to love another, Vivian, is not puffy. It's, it's actually very beautiful. It's only when they start touching each other's bottoms that it gets... <laughs> I'm going to tell Mike and Neil that you said you love men. Hey, Mike, look, no, all I said was that this comic is a reactionary militarist pamphlet. All they ever do is fight all the time. And what's so wrong with that? I suppose you think we should all go around touching each other's bottoms. <laughs> Dan Dare touches a meekon's bottom. <laughs> Exciting new story. Batman gooses a joker's girl. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. What's this? <laughs> but in puffy. No, that's peace. <laughs> That's my bottom, isn't it? They're two completely different things. Well, can I have the comic then? No, it's mine. I paid for it and I intend to read it. <laughs> Five past eleven and it's still raining. I wonder how hard it is. I think it's probably not very hard, seeing as how it's only made of water. <laughs> I'm going to find out anyway. It's only spitting. <laughs> God, this stuff is so reactionary. Why can't they show us some real heroes? Dream, 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 dream. <laughs> you gay black bastards. We're going to victimise you. <laughs> oh, no. Who can help us now? Oh, no. 
people's poet. Good gosh, people's poet. Is it really you? Yes, it is. And you pigs are in for a pretty big shock. Right on. <laughs> what do you think you're doing, pig? Whack! Do you really give a fig, pig? Bam! And what's your favourite sort of gig, pig? Barry Manilow or the black and white minstrel show? Fuck out! Thanks, people's poet. Now the, the pigs won't hassle us, us now on the streets, streets anymore. Yes, Mike? Come over here. You want to know why I keep hitting myself in the head with the frying pan, don't you, Mike? No, I don't. Oh. Where's my breakfast? Yeah. Where's the bloody vindaloo, hippie? You said you'd go to the shops two hours ago. Oh, come on, guys. It's always my turn to go to the shops. So why haven't you gone? Well, it's raining. My hair will lose its shape. <laughs> anyway, I haven't got any money. There's plenty of money in the kitty. Yeah, but he's constipated, isn't he? <laughs> well, let's open him up, then. There he is, Vivian! Get him! Do you know what my favourite vegetables are? Eh? Peas! Five peas! Ten peas! Fifty peas! My wife, she's a terrible cock doll. Well, she would be. She's dead. I was having a meal with her the other night, right? And what if... Oh! Ah! <laughs> you get it? No! Oh, come on, Jack. He's left a little present on the map. OK, guys. What do we need? Neil, you know exactly what I need, because all my stuff is marked with sticky labels. Wait a minute. Is yours the stuff with the sticky labels with Rick written on it? Yes. Oh, sorry. I'm very sorry, Rick. I didn't know. I thought it was mine and I've eaten it every last bit. Look, <laughs> guys, I know exactly whose who's food's who, right? Because I do all the shopping round here. And I do all the cleaning. My function round here might as well be your mother's. <laughs> Our mothers. All right, so most metaphors don't bear close examination. Anyway, for example, this glob of green mould on a saucer is Rick's. Yes, and I've spat on that, Vivian, so I wouldn't advise you eat it. <laughs> the urine sample and the super moose are Viv's. Yeah, yeah, I've got a potion. My potion as well. What potion? It's a potion I've invented where when a patient drinks it, he turns into an axe wielding homicidal maniac. It's basically a cure for not being an axe-wielding homicidal man. <laughs> the potential market's enormous. Well, is this it? Yeah, yeah, I put it in a Coke can so nobody would drink it by mistake. <laughs> you know, I just bet a bit later on somebody does drink that and turns into an axe-wielding homicidal man. <laughs> yes, I bet that as well. That's just a sort of crazy imaginative thing that happens around here, isn't it? <laughs> I said, isn't it? Well? Well, what, hippie? Well, what do we need? Look, we need everything except urine samples, green globules and, and super moose. Everything. Right. Lentils, wallpaper... Look, just get to the shops! <laughs> something. Nap? <laughs> Not a sausage. Nap. Why won't you let me take the lens cap off? <laughs> because they're not real binoculars. What's the point taking them off? Well, why can't we have a real pair of binoculars for a change? <laughs> because then the aliens would know that we're watching them, wouldn't they? But we're not watching them. But they're not to know that, are they? <laughs> this may sound like a stupid question. <laughs> lip, nip, 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 nip. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what are we really doing here? Really? Look, don't ask me. Ask the Manpower Services Commission. <laughs> I can't, you. Is that a milk? 
man. No, good. good. Pass me the milk bottle. It's pissing down now. <laughs> OK, that's just about the bloody limit. It's, I mean, I only put it in there on Wednesday. It's not as if they grow on trees or anything like that. Rick, what are you lost? I had half an apple in there. <laughs> All right, own up. Who's taken it? What were you doing? Saving it for teacher? Trying to keep the doctor away? If he's anything like you, yes! <laughs> Did you take it, Mike? Well, if you're going to sin, you might as well be original. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm going to look in your bin for the pips. <laughs> he shouldn't do that. Why not? There's a lion tamer in my bedroom. Moby. One flat. Six. Good. Moby. Pasha. Pasha, go on. Pasha here. Pasha! Flats, Pasha! On flats, Pasha! Pasha flats! On flats! On flats! Pasha! On flats! Up! Sit! Good boy! seen rain like this. Well, where's breakfast then? Oh, no, I knew I went out for something. Neil, if your head was on strike, you couldn't even pick at your nose. I'm starving, you bastard! Yes, so you keep saying, Hitler? Well, why don't you put your money where your mouth is and go to the shops yourself? Yes, you? Because I don't want my fire to rust! A little rain never hurt anybody! <laughs> anyway, you can take your stupid car. I could if it was tied down properly. Jamie! Look at the water out there! Now we're never going to get to the shops! Hey, Neil, can I have a look at your tonsils? Why, well, do I sound ill? No, no, no! I just want to put myself off breakfast. Uh... Oh, for heaven's <laughs> sake! Why can't we all start to behave like civilised people? I mean, we are students after all. We're, we're old enough to vote, we're old enough to do things to girls, we can go to prison, we can drive. Last week I even got into an X film, for Christ's sake. <laughs> so how about finding some nice adult pursuit to keep us going until the vein stops. Michael? 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 30. <laughs> Seven, eighty, two thousand five hundred. Coming, ready or not? <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> what are you having? What? Listen, I'm the best at playing games in this house, so you better go and find the others first. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. That's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Just come back in five minutes when they've lost the game. <laughs> Great hiding place, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but for heaven's sake, Vivian, I found you! Why won't anybody play this game properly? Look, I haven't started hiding yet, have I? But would you mind doing it now, please? I'll give you five. <laughs> five! Your Majesty, a young fawn. That's not a fawn. That's a man-child, son of Adam. His presence signals danger. It's the prophecy. Silence! We must question him. Hello, little boy. What's your name? Vivian! What a lovely <laughs> name. Come, sit next to me, child. Have some Turkish delights. <laughs> Spotted. Well, it's not me. <laughs> That's revolting. That's 
revolting. People like you should be put in little boxes tied up with string and left in small dark rooms without any electricity. Who says? For a month. Who says? She does. That's a lie, Shirley. Shirley, is that your name? Then Shirley. Oh, yeah. Shirley. Would you like some Turkish delight, my child? Oh, yeah. Not particularly. You got any kebabs? <laughs> Sweetheart, you eat the Turkish delight, or you'll find yourself in the rockery holding a fishing rod. <laughs> Look, I'm in a bit of a hurry, actually. You see, I'm trying to hide from someone. You haven't seen a wimpy sociology student being chased by a lion, have you? A lion? A lion. Well, if you do, don't tell him I'm hiding in this tree over here, OK? No, wait, man, child, I command you to wait. Stop him, Shirley. Your Majesty, he said a lion. It's the prophecy. It's ah! Oh, what is that? Bloody point! All oh, right, Vivian, I give up! Kelly, behind you! You bloody cheat! I thought we said no hiding in the cellar. Then what are you looking in the cellar for? I, I'm not looking for you, actually. I just came down here to tell you I didn't want to play your bloody childish game anymore. What do you mean? It was your idea to play hide and seek. It was a joke. I was playing another joke on you. And ha ha ha, because you fell for it. <laughs> well, I do fall for it because... Because while you were counting to a hundred, I went up to your bedroom and set fire to your sociology file. Bedroom's on fire. Quiet! Quiet! Come on! <laughs> there you've hit my button! <laughs> Hello! Hello, boys! It's Jesse Malowski, your landlord. Come for the party with the tremolo records, boys! <laughs> Hello, boys! Anybody home? Hello! Oh, nobody home. Oh, oh. Coca-Cola, symbol of free West. Oh! <laughs> oh, I like Coca-Cola. Mm. <laughs> Whoa, tastes good. <laughs> Hello, boys. Hello, boys. <laughs> Hello. Hello, boys. <laughs> boys, where are you, boys? <laughs> in there in the wardrobe, right? It was getting really hot and then and then suddenly I thought, oh no, I forgot to put out that sociology essay that was burning on Rick's desk. Yeah, I started that, trying to make Rick think I was hiding in his bedroom. What? You set fire to Rick's bedroom? I think that's a really selfish thing to do, Vivian. I was hiding in there, you could have given me away. Help! Help! Call the firemen! <laughs> Just think, I won't have to put my, my, my bed in the toaster now. Anyone got a light? Oh, blue and flip. Sorry, Mike, silly old me. I did have one, but I went and put it out. I'm such a twit. Slap, slap, slap. Hey, Rick, you've got a fish sticking out of your shirt. I hate sharks. Don't be stupid now. That's not a shark. No, but that is. That's just the most completely brilliant thing I've ever seen. A flying shark. Uh, Vivian, sharks don't fly. Oh, wow. That's what those sirens must have been, of course. Shark warnings. I, mean, I don't want to be a wet blanket or anything, but if this house is a bottle, I'm the one with a message. What do you mean, Mike? Simple. London has flooded. Oh, well, well, we'll all probably get drowned or eaten by octopuses then. <laughs> what? Phone the police! But they're fascists. Well, never mind about that now! <laughs> Telephone to the um... Anybody home? I don't spit on the meat! <laughs> 
And exactly how long have you been in the music biz? Since lunchtime. I was working in a well-known laundry in the King's Road this morning. Malcolm at Money came in and liked the look of me. <laughs> right. It all sort of took off from there. And uh, was it his idea that you should um, amputate your arms? <laughs> Originally, yeah. I could see the validity of the idea in the beginning. Right. In what way? Well, my music's all about urban alienation, apparently. What? Hey, what's going on in here? I can't swim. I can't even see. Look, uh, you, you, you do it. Why wasn't anything about this on the radio? <laughs> of you, Vivian. The house is under 50 feet of water, and what do you do? Build a submarine. <laughs> there's, uh, there's no room for me in there, is there? No. Good. Wait. Of course there isn't any room in it for you. Why should there be any room in it for you? I want to see you drown. And if I want to see you drown, why should I build a submarine with room enough for you in it? Stupid! I'm not even taking SPG along. Is that right? We'll see about that, Polly. <laughs> Bastard! <laughs> now, Vivian, mate, you broke your own submarine. You bastard! I'll show you a great deal of consideration over the years, but this is the end of the line! You're going out and play with the sharks! <laughs> I've seen all your films. <laughs> Could I have your autograph? It's a bore, I know, but, you know, I'd miss it if they didn't ask. <laughs> Anybody? Hello? 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 terrible if we ended up having to eat each other. Like those sailors did in that film, um, we ended up having to eat each other. <laughs> yes, I suppose it would, Neil. Except that we don't happen to have any dead sailors lying around the place. Or, or perhaps we do. Perhaps I just haven't seen them. Perhaps I should buy myself a white stick. Just saying. Yes, well, don't! Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> As usual, Mike, the cool person, comes up with a solution in times of trouble, and even trouble with a, a capital T. This is, as they say, the moment of not telling too many lies. Are you with me? No, not at all. <laughs> the definition of hunger. Too many guys, not enough food. All we've got to do is change the ratio. And Neil's come up with the answer. Oh, there's only one problem. Who's going in the pot? <laughs> Me. No, Kim, it's a joke. <laughs> Just my luck, I'm supposed to get the shortest straw. Mind you, it's pretty uncool of the guys not to show me theirs, but there you go. Oh, hi, guys. Yeah, come and sit down. Yeah. Oh, do you want to play some records? Uh, Oh, look, guys, guys, I just remembered I've got something uh, really important to do, you know, so goodbye. No time for that, Neil, we're hungry. Really <laughs> scared, really scared, scaredy cat, scaredy cat, sitting on the doormat, all the little doggy wogs. We'll have a little bit of it. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it like that, and you get a nice clean cut. <laughs> oh, Vivian? Yeah? Vivian, could I have an anaesthetic? Of course you can. <laughs> oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, look, uh, Mike, uh, is it time for a last cigarette? I don't see why not, yeah. <laughs> All right. I've got my business here, Mike. Here's Jetty! <laughs> him instead, actually. Little pigs! Little pigs! <laughs> let me in! Boys and girls come out to play on the busy motorway! <laughs> let me in! Jetsy wants to play hospitals! <laughs> oh my god! He's turned into a homicidal axe-wielding maniac! Oh well, out of the front! 
frying pan into another frying pan. And this time it's hotter. Oh, shut up, Neil. Shut up. 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 There's no one in here, Mr. Belovsky. We're all holograms. <laughs> what are you going to do, Mike? Well, we're halfway through the show and um, <laughs> it's time for a half time report. Um, <laughs> I think the show's been going particularly well. Um, I particularly like the way the young lad Rick has been running off the joke into the dead laugh area. <laughs> they're going into the international sphere. They're going to have to face some stiff competition, um, especially from the Swedes with their comedy series, Oh, Where's My Volvo? <laughs> Also, of course, from the French with their comedy series, Mr. Poo Poo Goes to the Lavatory. <laughs> anyway, I think. We're getting on. Oh, sorry, Paul. Anyway, the half time's over now and it's back to the action. <laughs> Let me in, boys. Jetsy wants to finger your entrails. Oh, well. I know. Put Neil's speaker in front of the door. I don't want to go in front of the door. Oh, no, not that speaker. Jimi Hendrix wants pissed on that. <laughs> Bobby was here with his man eating lions. Yes. I'd like to shake his hand. Here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, well, guys, come and look. The house has grown. He's wrong, you know. The waters are subsiding. What's that? <laughs> 